In this lesson, we're going to create an animation for a water drop falling across the screen and splashing when it reaches the bottom. So open up Action Script 3, and let's first just make a water drop. Now, I have, for some reason, my, my uh, computer keeps defaulting back to this. But anyways, I want a blue-ish water drop. And I'm going to grab the top and just pull. And I'm going to actually get rid of the outline. And let's go to color properties. Let's do like a radial gradient. And uh, mine's already set up from the last time I was practicing doing this. But let's say it's uh, the default is black and white. The alpha values would be like at 100 on each of these. So let's say you start off with this, you say radial gradient, then you take this tool, actually let's zoom in so we get a little better look at it, take this tool right here, the gradient transform tool, and put the shiny spot up there, probably reshape this so it's a little more like that. And now back to the black arrow tool to select all of this. Let's change this to, I would just take color of blue and that's probably good actually. One more thing though, just to, to make it look a little more realistic, let's make it 50% alpha. <coughs> <coughs> Alright, com command 2 zooms out. That's too big but it was good to work on it when it was larger, so I'm going to make it 50% smaller, maybe even another 50% smaller. And let's convert it to a symbol, function F8, Fn F8, drop. And we do want the registration point in the middle and movie clip, so I'm going to do that. And then point A to point B, let's make a point B out here. Uh, I'll go out here and just say F6, and then create motion tween. Uh, actually, I should have made it a classic tween. Not that you can't make it a non-classic tween, but I just like a classic tween. I'm going to put the raindrop, I'm going to put the drop off the screen. So now, if we publish it, we basically have that which is okay, but some easing would probably be wise. So I'm going to try one. It'll be one way or the other. Okay, it looks like it's slowing into place, so we need the other direction. Negative. That looks a little better. So now when we get to the bottom, at this moment we want it to actually, uh, we want something else to happen. So I'm going to hit F6. And let's zoom in on this. And I would probably just delete this, or maybe we'll break it apart. So that way we have the same image. And then I'm going to hold um, Option and drag out some copies. And then I think I'll use the transform, free transform tool to rotate and even stretch it and stretch it a little bit. Rotate this one, stretch that, rotate and stretch. So now, uh, actually I'm not even mistake to do it just yet. Maybe not. I guess I'll just do a, I'll, I'll tell it to make a shape to not, I'll try that. We might not get what, exactly what we're after, but I'm going to move this up, move that over. And with shape twins, you don't always get what you expect, so wouldn't be surprised if this looks really weird. But if we're lucky, it'll, it's not too bad. The 
looks like it needs to probably happen faster, so I'm going to remove these frames. Now let's see how that looks. It's not too bad. I think I might want to make it smaller, so I'm going to click on this frame that grabs everything. Option Command S, 50% smaller. Let's relocate it down to about where the drop it was. And this one, let's make it smaller too. And bring it down a bit. See what that looks like. It's not too bad. It might look better if we alpha this down. I think I'll turn it all that color and just say alpha zero. That way it kind of fades out. Alright, so that's, uh, let's save this water drop, and that's all done just with straightforward animation, that's not using any action script, but I would like to extend this lesson real quick by offering you some action script action script way to go about it. I guess I'll start new. If I take this, I'll copy it, and then command N, my new action script 3.0, and I'm going to paste it right there. And so this is a new, I'm going to call it water drop AS3. So action script 3, because we're going to use action script 3 here. Uh, I already have one made, so I'll say two, underscore two. Okay, so now, this is not going to do anything. It's just a symbol. And remember, we copied it from the previous. But inside here, if we go inside the symbol of the water droplet, and let's call this graphic, and then we'll make a new layer called actions. And F6 a couple times. Third frame, let's open up the actions panel by hitting FN, F9. We want to do go to and play two. Okay, now we go to the second frame. And gotta open up the action panel again. Let's just do y plus equals 10. Okay, so now we publish it and notice it's going down at a rate of 10 pixels per second. Okay, that's good. In the first frame, we can tell it, see it's going to read the first frame first, then it's going to read the second frame where it takes away um, or moves the droplet down 10 pixels. Then it's going to read the third frame where it sees, or go, go to the second frame again. Because the second frame again, it sees uh, to add 10 to the y position. So in the first frame, if we tell it y equals 0, then it's going to make it start out at the top. I would even make it minus 20 or something, just so it's a little higher than the edge of the, the uh, stage. Okay, so I'm going to save that. And what do we got now? Think about this. It's falling when it hits the bottom of the screen. We actually want it to do like a splash. So, or for now, let's have it go. We'll say if if y is ever greater than 600, which is the height of the stage, go to and play. One, so we'll basically make it start over. Okay. Not only that, but in the first frame, when we tell it uh, y equals twenty, we also tell it x equals. Well, actually, we could tell it to pick a random number, but um, I, 
I'd have to look that up because that's I haven't worked with that random code in a while. Uh, let me try it. Let's see. Flash AS3 random. No. <clears throat> Should be easy enough to find this. Click to it. Put a random number. more complicated than I wanted to be. Let's try a different way. Okay, so this is more like what I was looking for. A random number between 0 and 5, so uh, let's just copy that right there. Paste this into the first frame. Put it up at the top. Oh, come on. My number, okay, so times five. I actually want it to be times 800 because the width of the stage is 800. So let's see what that does. You notice down here it gave me 28.6 or Try it again, get another number, try it again, get another number. It's never greater than 800. It's always between 0 and 800. That's how this works. So, um, I'm going to change this to XPOS, meaning X position. And then we'll just say X equals XPOS. Okay, so it's that easy. Now you'll notice it hopefully we'll be in a different position every time. Yes, it's a different position. Right, and it's pretty simple that way. Now, uh, here's a cool trick. In the first frame, let's, uh, let's define something called y speed equals zero. Let's say y speed equals zero, and then in the second frame, instead of adding 10, to the uh, instead of adding 10 to the y position, we'll add y speed. But of course, y speed is zero right now, so y plus y speed is going to give you nothing. In fact, to prove it, it's just okay. Well, actually, wait a second. I did make a mistake in my formality. Got to remember that Action Script three is a little pickier than Action Script. Two, which is my specialty. What you need to do is it lets you get away with not specifying what kind of variable it is. So that's the way to write it. Now let's try it. And it's basically off the screen, up, up high. It's not falling down until, because like I said, y speed is zero. But uh, so right now y is getting added to zero. But what we're going to do is say y speed plus equals uh, 0 0.1. So what that'll do is take 0 and add a tiny bit to it. And then the next time it reads it, the 0 or zero will become 0 0.1, and then y speed will become 0 0.2. Every time it reads this, it's going to add 0.1 to it. And maybe we should actually add 0 0.5 so it speeds up the process. So first, y will be added to 0, but then it'll make... Um, 0 plus 0.5, so the next time it reads it, this is going to be a plus, or 0.5. And then it'll be a 1, and then it'll be 1.5. So it'll be getting bigger and bigger, and it'll act like gravity. So notice now, it's speeding up more like real life. Like you've got some gravity there. So that's pretty cool. The next step is to Instead of telling it to repeat, uh, to go back to the first frame, we'll tell it to go to and play four, and that's where we'll put our splash. So I'm going to uh, create a keyframe there. I'm going to actually go over here and borrow this splash, because it looks pretty good. 
So I'm going to copy. I'm going to go over here and I'll just delete that and paste. Let's see. Where is it? I'm not seeing it. Oh, it's because my drop it somewhere else. No, it's down there. Okay, so we need to actually move this up there. And then there's going to be this too. It needs to move up. Okay, so now it will splash right there, and that's where the droplet is. So let's see how that looks. It's the bottom of the screen, and I did see a splash, but it's going a little too far down for me to enjoy seeing it. So instead of 600, let's make it like 580 or something. Pretty cool. It does look like it's kind of going down though, so I'm going to arrow key this out. That way it looks like it's splashing upwards. Boom. Boom. Okay. And let's see. Now that we have that, because if we go back to scene one, remember all we have is just this one raindrop. If we then Hold down on control or option, the option key, and just drag out a bunch of copies. You'll see that we have a bunch of different raindrops. Of course, they're all falling at the same um, height. And so, to deal with that, if we go back inside, look at the first frame, we say y equals minus 20. We can do the same thing with the y position. So I'm going to create a y position variable, and we'll say <laughs> 600. So it's going to pick a new y, and actually we don't need to trace it anymore. Let's get rid of that. That was just so we could read down here what those were. And now we paste y position in place of the negative 20. And I would say Y position, let's make it, um, if we, let's see, if we do it this way, then it's going to appear right on the stage. They're going to be in random. They're going to appear out of nowhere. So it would be better to subtract 600. So they'll be, instead of right on the stage, they'll be up above the stage when they're forming. They still seem to be kind of falling in waves. So if you wanted to spread them out a little more, well, we could just go uh, 1,000 minus 1,000. I might spread them out a little better. That way there's some early ones hitting. Of course, if we just create more raindrops, uh, and also the longer this animation plays, the more spread out they are. They're really only um, behaving that way at the start. So if we create some more, oops, the more raindrops we create, the more random it should seem. A little better. But that's the basic idea. So, This we are done. 